Welcome everyone to another episode of Real Talk. I am your host, Carlos Skill. This is my all new video series in which I answer your questions on social media marketing and interview interesting guests in the world of business. So I'm back here in the studio at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco, and I've got an action-packed episode loaded with knowledge bombs just for you. So for this episode, I decided to go to Facebook to see what questions have been weighing on your mind around social media marketing. First question comes from an aspiring rock star in McKenzie. McKenzie wants to know how often should he be looking to post on social media and also what should his content calendar look like? So to answer the first part of your question, McKenzie, the beauty of social media and social media marketing is you don't always have to create content to create content. And where I'm going with this is you can get involved in things like Twitter chats and have conversations in LinkedIn groups and various Facebook groups around your industry, around your niche, around your vertical. So for example, if you're looking to build your presence in hospitality marketing or in sports marketing, whichever your industry is, there are groups online in which you can immediately jump in and you can start having conversation. Conversation is content, guys. Content isn't always writing a blog post or making a nice YouTube video or going on Periscope or Facebook Live. Content can also be context. And I think that's something that's honestly lost a lot in social media these days. I'll tell you this, before I had the personal brand that I have today, it was engaging on Twitter chats, LinkedIn groups. It was having a lot of conversations with other individuals in my industry. If you do that enough times, people will get to know who you are. And if you do that, the content that you create, i.e. blog posts, videos, et cetera, will come along with it over time just by you having conversations with others. Again, how I'm answering your questions today was not me creating a blog post of content, but rather was creating a Facebook post which generated your questions. The second part to that, Mackenzie, around your content calendar is once you start getting to the point where you're creating blogs or videos, start scheduling them out, or better yet, sit down and have a calendar. Monday through Sunday, what Twitter chats are you gonna get involved in? What groups are you gonna work? Start thinking in your mind, different questions that you wanna put out for your audience, and start writing that down, whether it's on Word doc or on your iPhone, have some sort of a record or a log. That way you're being strategic. That is the best content calendar for when you're getting started is where are you going to be and what are you gonna post once you show up? The next question comes from Lindsay. Lindsay is another aspiring social media rock star who's crushing it on Snapchat. But her question is around connecting and specifically what platforms should you be looking to use to connect and how. And my advice to anyone out there that's looking to use social media from a discovery standpoint is, first of all, go to LinkedIn. So if you're looking to use social media on a professional level, and chances are, if you're watching this video right now, that falls into the category you're looking to use social media for. So go to LinkedIn, and really I use LinkedIn as a business directory to identify who are you looking to connect with and at what companies. So if you're looking to gain sponsorships, for example, Lindsay, for your snaps, what sort of companies are you looking to generate sponsorships with? And use LinkedIn as a directory, as a resource to identify individuals in marketing at those companies. But it's not just limited to LinkedIn. You have to also work the other channels out there. So that's where Twitter comes into play. Look up that person on LinkedIn first and then go immediately to Twitter and see if they have a presence on there. If they do, network and engage with them on Twitter. Better yet, go to Facebook. A lot of individuals will go straight to LinkedIn and Twitter and then they stop there. And they don't realize that if you go and you work professionals on Facebook, you are now hitting them up in a medium in which they are letting their guard down and they are not used to being hit up from a sales or from a business networking perspective. I look at Facebook wholeheartedly as the golf course of social media. And, and where I'm going with this is that, again, it's a resource in which people are much more personable and they're much more friendly than if you just hit them up on LinkedIn. And again, you're already on Snapchat, Lindsay, so also work Snapchat. If you see that individuals that you're looking to connect with from a business standpoint are on Snapchat, 
Work them there. Leverage the fact that you're creating engaging, funny, witty content on Snapchat so they really get to see the personality and the human side of you that most likely they're not necessarily gonna see on the surface on LinkedIn. So we're speaking about different social networks. Karina wants to know, how do these various social networks operate in parallel with one another? The breakdown that I like to use is LinkedIn is your Rolodex. It's where you're gonna go to identify people you wanna do business with. Twitter is the mega virtual conference where you're gonna go and have open dialogue and engage with others that, again, you're looking to do business with or you're looking to go ahead and learn from in your industry. Facebook, it's the virtual golf course. It's the virtual hotel lobby bar. It's where people go to be much more personable. They let their hair and their guard down. It's where, over the years, I've actually made some of my biggest business deals when I was running my company, Jobs Direct USA. It was actually through Facebook, believe it or not. Nowadays, you have things like Snapchat and Instagram where you can get an even more intimate, closer look at what people are like and what they do outside work hours. Where I'm going with all this, and again, this goes back to Lindsay's question, and hopefully this is addressing yours, Karina, is all these social networks are intended to do one thing, and that's really bridge you together with people that you're looking to potentially do business with, people that you're looking to hire, and others out there that you might be wanting to get to know in your industry. The key word in social media is social. You gotta socialize, and all these platforms, when you combine them all together, help you do just that. Discover and engage. Karina also wanna know is how to use Snapchat in a service-based business. So assuming, Karina, that your company is offering services to others, and we're not talking about customer service, you can use Snapchat to actually show off the work that you do. Get permission from your clients and ask if you can use Snapchat as a way to do a case study for their business and the work that you did for, for them. Then go on Snapchat and actually create a virtual via video case study of the services that you provided for your client. Go one step further and go on Twitter and on Facebook and on LinkedIn and hit up your email newsletter and say, hey, go visit my Snapchat on this day and I'm gonna show you or I'm gonna speak to you about how we did X for X client. Now, if you're talking about customer service and how to use customer service on Snapchat, you have things like voice and video calling at your disposal. So if someone has an issue and they need it to be quickly addressed, historically, they pick up the phone and they call your company's 1-800 customer service number. Today with Snapchat, it's as easy as them picking up their phone and either snapping you a video of what their issue is or they can make a phone call or video call. I'm a big proponent around using Snapchat for community management. And I think one of the things that you're gonna see going forward into 2017 and beyond is companies are gonna give their community manager at their brands a face and a voice because Snapchat makes that possible. Where now, if I have an issue with Coke or Pepsi or Cole Haan or Nike or so-and-so, instead of sending them a tweet, instead I can go on Snapchat and I can send their brand a message over voice or over video and hopefully someone's gonna be on the other line sending me a voice or video message back. Sandra wants to know, in a few sentences, why should a business be on Snapchat? And I get asked this question throughout my travels all over the world when I'm speaking at various conferences about Snapchat for business. And my answer is always the same. For starters, if your audience does not live on Snapchat, then your business most likely should not be on Snapchat. The flip side to that is that if you are trying to sell to a 13 to 35 year old, then your business absolutely should be on Snapchat because that is one of the best ways to reach that audience today. So to answer in a few sentences, assuming that your business falls in the category of why I should be on Snapchat, very simple. Snapchat helps tell your brand story in a very transparent and humanistic way, which Facebook and Twitter do not. And where I'm going with this is anyone at your organization or anyone who lives and breathes your brand, i.e. customers and advocates, they have the ability to pick up the phone and through Snapchat, through live video on Snapchat, they can tell your brand story, who you guys are, how they do business with you, how they're an advocate, how they're a proponent. This is a tool, like the other tools out there, that helps you broadcast your company's message. Again, very different from Facebook and Twitter, whereas those other platforms, 
you're basing, you're creating a lot of your social media content on photos, on text space, whereas Snapchat, it's very short. I call it Twitter meets YouTube. Very short micro telling video content. I know it's more than three sentences, but stick to the first sentence. It really helps tell your brand story in a very humanistic, transparent fashion. The last question comes from Bryn. Bryn wants to know, how do you get the right audience to watch you on Facebook Live? Well, this goes back to who are you putting your content in front of across your other social media channels? If you're speaking to the right audience, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or what have you, if you're speaking to the right audience, then that audience should really be engaged about the content that you're posting out there. So if you're gonna create, in your case, Facebook Live content around how to be a great sales professional, you should be looking to promote your content in platforms where sales professionals are engaging or where they're opting into, whether that's social selling groups on LinkedIn, whether that's the social selling hashtag on Twitter. So first of all, make sure that you're putting your content in front of the right audiences. Use your mailing list as well. So before you get ready to do a Facebook Live, send an email out to your email newsletter and say, hey, in an hour, I'm gonna be going on Facebook Live, or as soon as you go live, send that link out, and then you'll start seeing people jump in that way. There's a lot of cross-promotion that goes into a very successful Facebook Live. I see this happen all the time where friends of mine, they'll jump on Facebook Live, they'll have four or five people watch, and they'll be very, very discouraged. And my answer to that is two things. One, are you promoting your Facebook Lives in advance? Are you promoting them to the right audience? And two, tell me about the quality of the views. Let me tell you something, if you have four to five really engaged quality people watching your content and one or two of them buy, then that's a total success from my standpoint. So don't focus so much on the number of views, focus more on the quality, but definitely, Bryn, to go back to your earlier point about how do you get people to watch, be sure that you're cross-promoting your content across channel and you're driving, almost like that sales funnel, you're driving that right audience back to watch your Facebook Lives on your Facebook page. So for this last segment, I wanna talk about comparing Snapchat to YouTube. Many of you have noticed over the last couple of months that I have been going harder on YouTube and I've been scaling back my content on Snapchat. And there's a reason for that. I see immense value in leveraging both of these platforms to create different content, but yet at the end of the day, merge them back together. And where I'm going with this is YouTube is the second most searched website online. It's where I wanna put content like this that has a lot of value that's gonna live on. Whereas, as you guys know, with Snapchat, the content disappears within 24 hours. So how I'm looking to use both of these is on Snapchat, it's where I'm going every day. I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking to the Snapchat fam. You guys are talking back to me, we're engaging. You're asking me questions. And then I'm able to come here on the set at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco in a beautiful facility and I'm able to create this content that's gonna live on beyond 24 hours. And then once I create this content and it's edited and packaged up and I put it on YouTube, then I go and I tell the Snapchat fam, hey, I just put my latest video on YouTube and then you guys go there and watch. So you see how that works. I'm using Snapchat to once again stay in constant contact with, with my social network. It's where I'm going to show you guys what's happening behind the scenes and then the end product is coming here, creating this content, packaging it up putting it on YouTube, and then going back to Snapchat. I'm a big proponent of cross-promotion. You can definitely use multiple social media networks as long as you are not saying the same message over and over and you're not repurposing your content. So again, YouTube versus, versus Snapchat, two completely different mediums. In fact, I like to compare Snapchat to Twitter meets YouTube. And where I'm going with this is the majority of the content created and consumed on Snapchat is in the form of video, and I like to look at my own Snapchat channel as its own micro YouTube channel, if you will. And I think you guys out there that are looking to create a little bit more content, especially the McKenzie's and the Lindsay's of the world, they're getting started in this business. You're already on Snapchat, you're already on Facebook, you're already on YouTube, you're already on Twitter. Really look at how your strategy is gonna be creating unique content on each one of these platforms, but then at the end of the day, how you're gonna go back to these platforms and tell your audience, hey, add me on Snap, because here's what I'm posting there, or go check out my latest YouTube or Facebook video, or in the case of Bryn, go check out my upcoming Facebook Live, because there's gonna be value that you can get there that I can't necessarily give you all here in 10 second increments at one time.
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Real Talk. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.